Now, when I started to help out with that idea of looking for examples where science in the context of gender ideology might be represented in public broadcasting, it was really going down a rabbit hole. And I'll show you um, two examples today, which I think are representative of a few of the tactics used. So the first example is about scientific facts around sex. Um, what you see on the left is a screenshot from a science show in one of the um, public broad or published by one of the public broadcasting agencies, the WDR, um, where the German title roughly translates into boy or girl, why there are more than two sexes. But what's important to note is that the German word Geschlecht or Geschlecht on plural actually has no very precise meaning. It can mean sex in the biological way. And when I refer to biological sex, I mean the definition about developmental pathways leading to the production of either large or small gametes, which are necessary for sexual reproduction. However, Geschlecht in German could also be used to refer to gender, so stereotypes or societal roles assigned to the sexes, or gender identity. And the first problem with this example, it's a 45 minute TV show, is that they don't define what they mean with Geschlecht. Do they mean sex? Do they mean gender? Do they mean gender identity? Do they mean a potpourri of all of that? And if they, and that's what they imply, refer to um, Geschlecht as biological sex, then it's important to note straight away, there is no proof for a third gamut in scientific literature. So what do they mean with more than two sexes? To show you a few examples of how this um, TV show got things wrong is I translated German's quotes into English. Um, so there's several um, spots within that video where they claim that early during development embryos are both male and female, or that embryos have both male and female genital precursors and therefore are intersex at day 30. Now, if you look at the actual scientific facts at day 30, embryos have three gonads. These are not yet differentiated. They haven't even started the pathway into male or female development, even though the path that they will go down to is already genetically determined. And then we have, in fact, two duct systems, the Wolfian and the Müllerian ducts, which later on develop in either the male or the female genitalia, such as the fallopian tubes, uterus, cervix, or the upper part of the vagina. But the fact is that you can either develop the Wolfian ducts, so the male part or the female duct. Um, the development is mutually exclusive. So what we actually have in embryos is that because the gonads are undifferentiated, they're neither male or female, and the duct system, will eventually develop and develop by resolving one and keeping the other. So claiming that this is both male and female is absolutely wrong because we have underdeveloped or not yet differentiated structures. What also is important is that they use the word intersex. Um, now we know that the better term would be differences or variation of sexual development. And if you imagine an embryo, which would be um, really intersex at that stage, it would mean the absence of genital precursors before differentiation or a lack of differentiation of those structures later on, either of which would lead to infertility, meaning a severe medical condition. So this is by normalizing the idea, which is scientifically wrong, that embryos are intersex, the attempt probably was to remove potential stigma from people with DSDs, but actually um, they completely ignore the fact that many DSDs might result in medical conditions which are worthwhile or require treatment. A few other quotes from those 45 minutes. There is a person called Lindy introduced who calls himself or herself a hermaphrodite. And the host then further on explains that Lynn is neither man nor woman. Well, first of all, true hermaphrodites, functional hermaphrodites do not occur in humans. And hermaphrodites are both male and female. They're not neither. They're actually both, and they certainly do not constitute a third sex. There's another quote uh, I stumbled across, which made me um, uncomfortable, which is humans differentiate children as girls and boys because that's easiest. Well, that might be true, 
but nat nature strives for diversity, implying that nature is better than humans, and they provide two examples. One is turtles and the other is fish. Now, in turtles, sex is in fact determined by external environmental temperature, um, which then drives gene regulation, basically leading to an individual embryo going into a male or female differentiation pathway. So the switch is different, but the process is the same. It's not more diverse than what happens in humans. And of course, um, sex change in fish is A, something which doesn't happen in humans, and B, they change from male to female or vice versa. There is no third sex in fish. Other examples, I'm not going to go into too much detail, they talk about asexual reproduction, which has nothing to do with sex, as asexual implies. They talk about isogametic species, which have mating types, not sex. They talk about hormone levels, um, which made me laugh because a castrated bull, as you're all aware, is still male. And also claim that brain is a mixed sex organ um, based on transgender individuals and that men can therefore think female, which made me wonder because I was nearly shouting at my TV at that point, whether this is the male part of my brain then taking over and making me angry. So overall um, in this show, what is done is they provide a lot of scientifically accurate details, which are fascinating to watch, but by lacking a clear definition of what they mean with Geschlecht or sex, um, and by basically just throwing bits of complexity to the audience, um, they are more confusing than clarifying anything. Um, and because there's lack of clarity, they imply without demonstrating um, that sex is not binary. So it's confusion rather than um, factual education. 